Hey everyone, in this video, I wanted to share with you a technique that I use to create vector art designs using AI art. So I'm gonna show you how I did this with this design right here. This is the one I made for biking. Uh, and you can see the difference right here. So this is the AI art and my vector art, which is a lot cleaner. I'm gonna show you how to do this in Affinity Designer. You can do this with any vector tool. You can do this with Figma or Illustrator. I just, I'm just gonna use Affinity Designer in this tutorial. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see how to do it in Illustrator or Figma or some of the other ones. Um, but we're gonna go first to ChatGPT where I got it. I'm gonna show you the prompt that I used uh, for this art. And then I'm gonna show you what kinds of things you should be looking for because not every uh, AI art is gonna translate really well to vector art. It's gonna be really hard. So I'm gonna show you some of the things that you should be looking for. Then I'm gonna bring it into Affinity Designer and show you some tips and tricks on how to trace this and what to do when things don't look really nice. Uh, some ways to make it look better uh, in the vector art instead of following just everything in AI art. So we're gonna do a lot of tips and tricks, a lot of good stuff. I think uh, you can learn in this video how to make good uh, vector art that looks even better, uh, which is an upgrade from the AI art. So let's go into ChatGPT and I'll show you my prompt and everything. All right, so here we are on chatgpt.com. I'm using StickerWiz, you can see right there. And uh, it's a GPT on there. And you can see this one came out really good. It looks like vector art. You can see some of the other ones would be really tough to create into a vector like this one right here. It's too, too detailed, right? So what we're looking for, I'm gonna click on it, is these dark lines, these like straight lines, see? So that's what we wanna look for. And these all are kind of even lines and that's what we wanna look for too. Now, it doesn't matter if it's kind of blurry here because we can fix that. But if most of the lines are nice and straight like this, we can trace over it and just have the same width in, uh, in vectors in, in Affinity Designer or Illustrator or whatever. Now you don't have to worry about the shadows. You could add that if you want. We're not gonna do that. Uh, that's just an extra step. And we can see some things here are kind of blurry, but don't worry, we can, we can fix that or change that in Affinity Designer. So we're just looking, does it mostly have straight lines? And the answer is yes. And so this is a good candidate to trace uh, in Affinity Designer. Now, um, in the prompt, I'll show you the prompt right here. It just says a die cut sticker of a cute cartoon capybara riding a bike with a basket full of flowers on it. The capybara is depicted with a happy expression enjoying the ride, blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't say the style. And so it's kind of a hit and miss uh, in ChatGPT if you'll get the style or not. Um, you probably could put it into the prompt and say with a black outline. Sometimes that helps, but you can see this one doesn't say with a black outline and I still got it. So um, not all of them will come out like this, but when you do see one like this, save it, um, maybe try it again. Cause I'm guessing like, let's say I copy this right here and let's go all the way down and try it again. I'm gonna guess that the next time won't actually be, even with the same prompt, it's not gonna be exactly that style, right? The, Chat GPT and uh, StickerWiz kind of changes up their style. And so you won't see the exact same style every time. And well, this one did do it. <laughs> this one does have a black outline and stuff. So maybe try that, try that prompt yourself and see what happens. This is totally different. It has flowers, but it's not exactly the same. So this, this one also is a good candidate for uh, tracing because you can see it does have the outline. So hit and miss, we hit we hit it twice. You can try it again with the same same prompt and see what happens with StickerWiz or any other AI art. But again, what we're looking for is that same thickness of line drawing is, is what I use. And you can see in here, right here, that's what I use for my um, Corgi eating ramen, right? It's the same thick line. And so I, I love this style, um, really easy to trace in Affinity Designer. So that being said, Let's go to Affinity Designer. I'm gonna bring the, not this one in, but I'm gonna bring the other one in and I'll show you how I traced over it. All right, so here we are in Affinity Designer. You can see I dropped it in here. This is the original um, from ChatGPT, right? And this is my artboard and you can see the difference right here. Uh, this one is just solid and doesn't have the shadow here and the same thickness, right? So you can see it doesn't have this gradient. It doesn't have this right here. We've kind of fixed that basket, right? I put lines instead of there. So 
I could have made it this color, but I think I, I liked it all the same color. You can see what I did with the flower here. I didn't like that. So I just changed it to this flower, right? This one right here we already had. And some of these ends didn't connect. So guess what? I connected the lines, right? So very easy to do once you have it. Um, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So let's go and make another artboard. Uh, you can see this is the finish one that I did with the, with the text as well. Um, but I'm just going to show you how, how to do this part. You, you can put in whatever text you want. By the way, this, this font right here, if you like it, it's Valken. I like it because it's rounded and there's a lot of round, roundness to it. So uh, I'm going to move this over here. I'm going to make another artboard. I'm going to copy this one. I'm just holding down Option and Shift. I'm going to get rid of this one. I'm going to put this back here. And so this is, a, this is the tip and trick here. Now that this artboard is here, let me see, am I, let me close some of the artboards so we can see. All right, so this artboard, you can see right there, and that's it right there. So let's move it to the top. You can move artboards to the top by grabbing this and just moving it. There we go, so that artboard's to the top. And we're gonna just call this test so we know which one we're at. There it is, test. And so this is the Dolly 3, yeah, right there. And we're gonna take this and we're gonna bring down the opacity so that it's a light like that. You can still see it uh, like 20%, I would say. And we're also going to lock it. So you can see that um, lock right there. I'm just gonna click it which means I can't grab it even by mistake. If I start grabbing it, it's fine. So basically I'm just holding it back there as a guide uh, for me to trace on. So what I like to do is I like to trace kind of the uh, circles or shapes that we already have. So this, because this is a circle and we have a circle, I don't have to redraw circles, right? I'm gonna just use the circle tool, ellipse tool, and then hold down shift while you do this and that's gonna make it a perfect circle, which means it's the same width and height. Now you can notice that it's white and black by default. Yours may be different. You can change that. You don't want the fill. So I'm gonna, now that I'm on fill here, I'm gonna say no fill. And then this here, I'm gonna want black. I like to just use a pure full black. So 100, 100, 100. You can use whatever color you want. If you want to make this all brown lines, then you can do that. But I would just suggest use the same color throughout because uh, it's easier to just use the color once you're doing it instead of trying to change the color after the fact, right? Now, uh, let's make sure that this circle is right. And if you can't see it, you can also up the opacity of this um, if it's too light, but I think that's fine. I think we got it right there. Now it should be the same size as this one. And I think that's right. We also want to make sure that we're using the same thickness everywhere of the line. So let's click on here. Let's go to stroke and we see we're using 10 points. So we want to use 10 points everywhere. Hopefully that's the right size. We'll check it out when we start drawing some other lines and see if 10 is the right. But first let's do this other circle here. So I'm going to do option drag just for another circle and put it down here and hold down shift and make sure that it's the right size here. I can bring this in, bring this down, right? And still holding shift to make sure that I'm on the right size. And that looks about right. And in order to make it uh, standard for all, both of them, I'm gonna click both and I'm gonna click up here to alignment and make sure that they align center this way as well as this way. Now that looks great. I'm gonna remove this one just because this one's locked in. I'm gonna copy this one and now I have my two tires. All right, now you may be thinking, well, this line is right here. Um, what about this when I cover, come over it? Don't worry, we're gonna fix that and I'll show you how to, how to do that. But Let's work on that line then. So we're gonna come down here and click here and click there. And then we can do kind of a circle like this. If it's too far, uh, not far enough down, we can 
do it again. So come here and come even further down. Kind of the center of this is kind of where I was thinking here. And then the center of this right here. So you can pull that. And you want to pull this kind of horizontal or yeah, horizontal or perpendicular. Is that the word to, to the other line right there? And click that one and up again. Actually, it doesn't go all the way up. So let's undo that and go here. And then it goes there, right? So that's one line. Uh, and then let's do the other one here. Click here, here, and here. There you go. So that's how you do it. Now what's going to happen is we're not going to do this whole thing, but you'll notice that uh, these two lines, this line isn't actually showing in the background. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill this with white, right? So let me show you how I would do that. And we can, we can always adjust this. So if this looks like it's not straight enough, um, not lining up to each other, you can kind of eyeball it and do that. Right. Okay. So here's what we're going to do with the white. So let's say we, we did all of these and it's time to color. We're going to come in here and we're going to kind of trace the whole thing again. Just make sure we're in it this time. Oh, not too far. Make sure it's in the black line and we could probably color all of this white too, but just for this example, I'm going to show you what, what happens. We still have the black outline. We're not going to use the black outline this time. We are going to switch it. So you can see there's no outline. It's black inside, but we don't want black inside. We want white inside, right? Now we got to look at our layers. So we want the white behind the black, these two. So we're going to do this. See this right here? It says back one. That's behind this one. And we do it back again. That's behind this one, but it's still in front of the tire, which covers the tire. Isn't that cool? Uh, and the other thing is, um, we need to color the tire too. So one trick to do that is you can have these two right here. I'm going to bring it out so you can see what happens. Now I'm going to use this right here, the minus subtract. Make sure that this one's in the front of this one. It's not. So this one needs to be in the front. So let's do front. And it's important because when you do subtract, it's subtracting the front, right? So let's do that subtract. And if we switch the colors on it and do like a gray, like that tire was, so let's do not white, but maybe like this gray here, we can put this in the back. Uh, of everything and I'm going to just drag it to show you how here we're going to we still want it in front of the the guide but it's in in back of everything else and that's how you do that tire so very simple we're going to do that the same way for all of these and let me show you some tricks some other tricks uh, as I get uh, further and further along Okay, I'm just a little further along now. You can see I've traced a, a bunch of different ones. And I want to show you a couple more tricks uh, that you can use here in Affinity Designer. Now we colored these things white uh, and some other things here. I wanted to show you kind of coloring the capybara and kind of fixing these flowers here. So first the capybara, you notice I did the outline already. And you may be thinking, how do I get that color here? And how about these feet? and um, what about kind of these gradients and stuff? So let me show you how to kind of simplify that. We have this in here. Um, let's draw these first. So just with the pen tool, what I'm going to do is come in here. Now these aren't outlines. These are going to be shapes. And I'm just kind of um, playing with this. I'm going to hold down control and click this. And that gives just that one. So this side doesn't have it. And I can pull this over. Um, sometimes you can leave it. So let's try it and see. You can see the times that you don't want to leave it, I'm going to show you here, is when it bows out too much. You can see that right there. And I can kind of come back and adjust with this here. But sometimes I like, I'm going to do Command Z. Sometimes I like hitting uh, Control here and then having more control to move this that way. And so I can use this 
one to do it. And same thing here. So there you go, that's the shape that I need. And to get that color, I can just go over here. So you can see this eyedrop right there, the color picker. I'm gonna click on this, hold down my mouse. You can see the color picker coming like this. And I'm gonna click that color, let go on that color. And you can see that color is now here, the color picker. And I can just click on it and it will change that to that color right there, right? So you can see that's how you can kind of pick the colors. Now we're gonna add these um, three right here. I'm already done it on this one, so I'm gonna kind of cheat and you would do it the same way though. But I'm gonna option drag here so that we don't waste any time. And you can see the color I picked for those, it's kind of different. So we wanna make all of these the same color. I'm just gonna hit that again, boom, a lot lighter. Okay, so next thing is the copy bar. You might have guessed it. We're gonna just use the pen tool and just kind of trace over everything that would be that color. Now you could go over this ear, but we're gonna make that ear a different color. So we're just gonna come in here like that and come in here just really quickly. It doesn't have to be exact, but it does need to be in the black line. So if you go over it for some reason, you can back out. Uh, Command Z and kind of come in here and fill this in and it can go behind here because it's going to go behind this spike and and you don't actually have to do this nose either because it's going to go behind the nose and there you go. So I'm going to do the same thing with the color picker holding down on my mouse button go over the color release now it's there and I can click on it and that's my copy bar again. This needs to be almost all the way to the back. I'm gonna move it one forward because it was behind. This thing is all the way in the back. The, the guide was all the way in the back. So moving it all the way in the back, moved it behind that. Um, but because it's kind of transparent, we can still see it through it. So we're gonna do one forward to make it there. Now these ears, we can do the same thing we don't need the gradient. So that's one thing that we're gonna change is we're gonna come in here and just color like this. And again, take that, that same color from here. Eyedropper, come in here and put it there. And this needs to be in front of this, but behind of this. So one way to do that is click on it, hit Command X to cut and click on this and hit command V. Now command V is paste in front. So we just pasted in front of that one color. So that that's a tip, um, a good trick that you can use there. And another trick that I like to do is uh, shadows and highlights. So let me show you what I do for that. Uh, so for a shadow, when I come in here, this one, this ear is gonna be just slightly darker than the other ear. So we're gonna color it, we'll start with that base here. Uh, and remember, we're gonna do X and click on this and V, so it's in front. And one thing I like to do for shadows is to add a little bit of black. So we have this CMYK, if I add just like a 10 more black, you can see that it's just a little bit darker. Now I would do the same thing with this arm right here, is make it a little darker than this skin. So let's let's do that here. I'm gonna come in here and just color this really quickly or make this shape really quickly and color it. So I'm gonna take that sample of that one. Uh, remember, put it in the back and one in the front and we're gonna add some X or K on here, some black. So I'm gonna add 10 to it or 20, sometimes 20 is enough. Uh, somewhere between 10 and 20, depending how dark you want. So you can see it looks like a shadow of this color. And now you can do the same thing uh, for this foot with that and so on. So if you ever want, need to have that shadow. Now the difference uh, that you can do for highlights is if you ever need a highlight, which I, I didn't do here, but if you ever needed one to be lighter, then you can take away the K or just kind of drop down some of the colors to make it a highlight. So. That's what I would do. I, I didn't put a highlight here, but let us let me show you what I would do for a highlight if I wanted to do one. So let's say there's a highlight that comes like this.
and I could do it white, right? And that would be super highlight. Again, this has to be in front, so I do Command X and Command V, and like that's a really dark highlight. So let me do the same color, but instead uh, there is no black. So instead of that, I'm gonna take this down, maybe down to two, and then take this down there. And you can see that's that's just a little softer highlight than if I did just a full full white, right? All right, so that's shadows and highlights. Uh, next thing is this flower. How would you fix this flower? Uh, I would just come in here with the with the pen tool. Come in here, you know, use your Bezier curves, click it here, do another one, do Bezier curves, click it here. It doesn't have to be exact. Remember, these are just guides for you to do a flower. So come in here, click, come in here, click. And again, remember, we're using the same thickness so we want the stroke to be 10 right but there is no stroke yet so we're going to make sure we color it the right color this is why it's easy to just keep it uh 100 100 100 now if it looks funny and this one kind of does you can come back in here and use your node tool and move things around so maybe make it a little taller maybe play around with these bezier curves and make it a little wider right and just move it around to you till it feels right right again the uh, the first one is just a guide and you can make these look a lot better a lot more round or sometimes less round if you need to come in here maybe that's too rounded you can kind of bring it in there you go and then of course the circle in the middle hold down shift Boom. And you can color this circle whatever color you want. Uh, we can go in here and pick the color if you want. Like this has a red and a pink. Or you could just kind of eyeball it. Maybe you want to change the color. So for the flower you want it a lot more magenta or pink. Right? Maybe it's a light magenta. And maybe you like that yellow or maybe you want it red. You you have the flexibility to, to color it now. So. There you go, those are some tips and tricks. Again, just use the pen tool uh, and then color it and put the coloring in the back or a little more forward if it needs to be like this one when this color needs to be in behind the tail, right? So you gotta figure those things out. This white needed to be behind this one. So figure that out and so on. So not too bad uh, and it looks great. Look at the finished product. Um, looks really nice. I didn't put any highlights on here, which I could. I could add a highlight here and here and here, and so and that sometimes that helps. And sometimes it's nice to put um, some shadow back here, which this one had. You can see there's some shadow behind here because it's underneath things. But I decided not to just to keep it more simple. And again, uh, I outlined the whole thing with white um, just so that it works on black and i didn't put the outline on the on the white one so that's that's my finished product right there hopefully that wasn't too long for you and hopefully you've learned some tricks on how to do this i think this is a great style and it can also teach you kind of how to draw some things so just do multiple ones on uh, chat gpt hopefully you get back the the style you want and start tracing it it's really fun uh, you can put on some music while you do it and, and move things around if, if they don't fit and, and kind of learn how to draw a flower and learn how to draw a leaf and, and so on because it's you're basically tracing. So there you go. That's how I created my vector design with ChatGPT's AI art, kind of tracing um, in front of it and using some of the techniques that I showed you. Uh, you'll learn and learn more and more techniques as you do it. I probably didn't show you everything you needed, but I think some of those can really help a beginner uh, if you're starting to do that. And just remember layers, uh, things that are in front and are in back and coloring, I think can go a long way. So hopefully, again, this is really helpful for you. If you wanna see a, another video that I did uh, with ChatGPT and Affinity Designer, I'll put that video right here so you can watch that if you haven't watched it already. Thanks again for watching. And as always, guys, keep creating and keep learning. I'll see you on the next one.